How are you guys doing? Welcome over here. Hey, if you guys are new to the channel, please do me a favor and subscribe. This is going to be the last video you see by myself. My counterpart, my co-host, is actually coming down right now. He'll be here in a couple hours, but I needed to get this info out to you guys, so I decided to do it right now. Hey, and by the way, after this, we're going to be doing a like a 14, 15 hour live stream straight from Ukraine. We have webcams that are on the street right now, literally taking footage from street cams and playing it. As I'm watching it right now, the Kiev is literally getting bombarded with, with shell. Like I'm watching I can see it right now. So make sure you guys stay tuned after this so you guys can actually watch the live stream and subscribe because we're doing multiple, multiple videos a day just like this. So please subscribe. Do me a favor. I do love you guys. All right, we're going to get into it. You guys know the peace talks between Russia and Ukraine fell through. A lot of people already know that that it was going to happen. I mean, that is something that we all knew and probably everybody in the world knew was going to happen because we know Putin right now is getting his teeth kicked in and he cannot allow that to happen. Russia has been shut off from the entire earth. Like, I was seeing photos of them down in their subway system, like actual civilians trying to use their phone and Apple Pay. They can't even get on the subways. Everybody's having to try to get cash, but their dollar literally is, is meaningless now. So that whole, that whole crisis in Russia is going to get kind of interesting. I, I don't know how that's going to pan out. It really sucks for all those civilians living there right now. It really does. But anyway, minutes after the talks fell through, because we all knew they were going to, because Russia does not want to leave their country and they don't want a ceasefire. But minutes after they, they fell through, Russian forces launched an attack on the northeast city of Kiev, which was an hour landing city, which I'm going to go over here to my Google Maps and show you guys. It was in Bravery, right here. You guys see this town or this little, it's actually just a section of the, the bigger city. It wasn't, they didn't directly hit the capital. They just hit this outer lying city and they're trying to push through and they have been and they currently are right now. I'm watching them literally do it. They're trying to get into the city. They're not able to. But I tell you guys that because I, I know that over the next 24 to 48 hours, it's going to be very, very important for Ukrainians to hold off because there is a massive, massive Russian convoy about 20-ish miles north of their the, of the city of Kiev right now. And that's the one we were talking about yesterday. It was three and a half miles long then and it's 17 miles long now. I have satellite images I'm going to show you guys right now of this convoy. So while we're overlaying these images, I'm going to explain to what's going on. It is approximately 20 miles north of the Antonov Airport, which I'll, you know what, we'll go ahead and pull over to Google Earth right now. I'll show you exactly where that's at. It is roughly, it is right here. So there's the Antonov, Antonov International Airport. It is on the northwest side of Kiev, and this convoy is 20 miles north of that it is on the outskirts and about 30 miles from the actual city limits. This convoy stretched out over 17 miles. It has some gaps in the column of vehicles, of course, for spacing, which is pretty normal. The line of vehicles is so extensive that it is not entirely captured in today's satellite imagery. In some areas, the vehicles are literally two and three rows deep. We do have a couple of those photos, which you can see. They actually look like the kind of, they, the, to me, they look like an LMTV, which is a, our version of just an unarmored, not an up armored, because these don't look up armored. They haven't been rolling around in up armored LMTV type vehicles that has just a canvas on the outside and, and infantrymen sit in the back. Like I can see that being a thing. Like you could fit like two two squads or so, maybe three squads in the back of one of these things. Maybe an entire platoon, depending on how big they are. So you fit an entire platoon. They've got, I don't know, masked thousands of men just north of Kiev right now. It is unclear currently what this con convoy is planning to do. Either it's going to go towards Kiev, the city center, or possibly join forces with other Rus Russian troops to enter the city, which, you know what, let's go ahead and annotate that on the map, which I know you guys love the maps, and I love them too. So I'm going to show you guys right now. This is the map from earlier today. As you guys do know, if you're new to the channel, the blue is going to be Ukrainian defensive positions that are pretty much dug in and pretty strong. And the red is the Russian controlled areas and where their movements are. The bigger the area, the, mad, the, the bigger the force, and so on. It kind of just makes sense. Now you understand? So this is the southern end near Crimea. So we're going to go ahead and swipe over to our other map. This is the current one that is in place. They have given up some ground right here. I don't know if it had any technical advantage. Really, they just need to go after these major cities, which that's what they're doing. As you can tell, they have amassed most of their troops and they are pushing towards Maripol. Go ahead and clean that up for you guys. All right. So we're going to push over here to Maripol. Now there's a lot going on over here. As you can see, they have completely encircled the city, but they have not been able to take it, which is kind of a, it's kind of a big deal. I told you guys, if they were to take it, they were going to hit it with an amphibious assault from here and go in and they can do their push northward. And that's not exactly what, what Ukraine needs right now. And that's why they're getting a lot of assistance from NATO because everybody like myself, I mean, there's people that know a lot more than I do. Don't get me wrong. I was only in the military for seven years. He was in for like 15. We've done a lot of stuff. We fought in multiple wars. That's why we have an understanding exactly what's going on on the ground. And we like to kind of show you guys to a certain extent. I'm not saying I'm a professional or anything like that, but I'm giving you some insight. 
that right there, if they were to take Maripol and push forward, that's going to be pretty bad. And that could possibly happen. And I think that's another reason why they've been waiting to push these people in from the north, this large force in from the north, because they need to take that southern side and it'll start pushing Ukraine and making them much, much more thin than what they are. I'll give it, I'll give Ukraine props. They have lasted much, much longer than the world thought. And I still have faith in them. I really do. I mean, hell, United States beat Britain back in the day with, we only had a couple colonies. You know what I mean? Like it can happen. I have faith in them. We also know that all lightly wounded Russian soldiers are currently coming out of the city of or Mazur, Mazur, I think, which is in Belarus. And I'm actually going to show you guys. We have a photo of it. So we're going to put that on screen right now while I scroll forward or up here, I guess you'd say. All right. So now we're up here in Belarus. This is, of course, just north of Chernobyl, which we were talking about the other day. I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but I believe that's why they took that area in Chernobyl, which is right up here. As you guys do know, this whole area right there. So I think they took that area because it's an easy access to come into Kiev. It must have the, the way the land lays out. It must be to their advantage logistically to get men in and out of the, the area quite fast. I, I don't know. I haven't been over in that area, so I have no idea what it lays out like. But I would assume that's why they're massing in that area, and that's why they wanted it. It has probably nothing to do with the nuclear side. It probably has everything to do with their logistical advantage to get into the country of Ukraine and to get men out. So right now, this city, Mazari, Mazur. Anyway, it's in Belarus. That right now, they're loading up there. That's where they're loading up their wounded soldiers onto trains to get them out of there, which is kind of funny because a couple days ago, Russia said that they had none, and they're the big propaganda machine. As of right now, they're looking at they've taken a toll of over 5,000 men have been either wounded and or killed in action. So they're just trying to spin it. It's, it's even crazy that Russia just completely shut off their entire country from social media, and then no one even knows what's really going on. Kind of sucks for them, but... All right, we're back at it, though. We'll get back at it. Russian troops have actually been captured just outside of Chernihiv. So we have some photos of that, and I'm sorry if I said it incorrectly, but that's one of the areas that I do believe that they've hit some some heavy resistance. I'm going to go ahead and pop over to this so you guys know exactly. It's up here just northeast of Kiev on this main route that's coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and annotate where that giant 17-mile-long convoy is sitting, and so it's up here in Chernobyl. So right now, that airport, I'm going to write that airport out for you guys. I'm going to write the airport in A, okay? And I'm going to write in some defensive positions. So that's where the airport is I showed you guys. So this is the current defensive positions that Ukraine has set in right now. They're super, super fortified when it comes to getting into the city. They have some out here on the east side as well. That's why you haven't seen them been able to push through to get in those cities. And they also have one right here and then also another one somewhere about right here. All right. So that's pretty much the northern layout currently. I guess I should probably annotate one right there because that's why they haven't been able to come through. Now I'm going to switch up back over to the black. Now this is exactly where, uh, not the, to the T, but this is a rough area as where that convoy is sitting. It is sitting roughly somewhere right here where this black line is. So that convoy is 20 miles north of this airport, which is annotated as A right there. So that convoy is sitting there. They're waiting. They're staged up, prepped, and ready to go. Like I said, a lot, I think a lot has to do with it, what goes down here in the south, and if they can break through over here. If they don't break through, if they don't break through on the eastern side, then they're probably going to have to do a little bit of split ops and, and take some of these men over there. But if they do, if somehow Russia, which if they do, they will push the whole force all the way down on that western flank of Kiev, and that will be what happens with them. But if they don't, this eastern side right here is full of tanks and heavy artillery and everything. They're trying to push through right here. If they get pushed through, then that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to encircle the entire city of Kiev right there. They'll then push all these men down here, and they will push them through. Because, I mean, this is a very large, large, I'm talking just massive. I mean, you're talking 17 miles long. You know how many men you can fit inside of there to fight? Oh, my, that's tons. That's why there's such a mass up there. So that's what I think is going to happen. Now, if they can't get through on this eastern flank, then they're going to have to split them up, I would assume, and really try to help them out and maybe get behind them on the backside. Of, and it's just, we'll see. We'll have to see how the next 24 to 48 hours plays out with that massive, massive force. Russian forces have now entered the town of, I'm going to jack this up, I'm sorry, Trost Yanitz, Trost Yanitz in the Sumi region. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. It's over here on the eastern side, so I'm going to show you guys. There's Sumi right there. Here is Sumi. All right, so we're going to go to Google Earth. I like to give you guys the exact location. So here it is. I just circled Sumi on the other map for you guys. So there's Trost Yamps right there, and there is Sumi. So they are directly south. Russian forces have now entered that, and I have actual video footage of that, which we're going to play right now for you guys.
Now, moving even farther south, we're going to be going down near Murray Pool, which is down over here. They have taken over a small town in the city of, it's, it's called, or the town is called H. Ranit? Ranit? Haranit? наши освобожденные города это наши люди это наше приближение к мирной жизни ну, к тому периоду о котором мы мечтаем когда можно просто созидать строить развиваться растить детей ну, соскучился по этому донбасс очень сильно соскучился I don't know, it's really tough for me to say, but I'm going to go ahead and, and annotate it here on the map for you guys. I'm going to annotate both of them so you guys understand exactly where we're at. So here's the one I'm just talking about. They just took this over. It's a small town. Now, it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting one. I know it's not a huge win for the Russian forces, and I'm really hoping that Ukraine can push them off. They, they pushed them off the town just north of them, this Volokanova part. They did push them off there yesterday, and if you guys notice, it's on a normal, or excuse me, not a normal, well, it is a normal road, but a, a main MSR right there, T0512. This main route that comes out of there, they need the main routes to move the logistics, I've explained multiple times, but the big deal is just on the outskirts of Maripool, and they haven't been able to take it. Now, they're currently in a heavy battle right now in the town of Nikoleski. So Nikoleski, as you can see, is just northwest of Maripool, which is right here. I'm going to flip back over to my other map, and I'm going to annotate it for you all. So, Mary Pool, they just took over right here. So, I'm going to switch over to red. Has just been taken over. So, they took over this area right here. All right. That's Hereni. So, now they're in a middle of a, a little bit of a, a tisk, I guess you would say. They're in a tick. They're in a fight to, to secure this area that's right here, this town that's right there. Right now, they're in a... a uh, current currently as we're making this video they're in a firefight they're in a battle they're literally they're, they're, they're battling it out for this area now if they get that they're going to completely encircle and probably control more more ground to where the big deal here is it'll make it to where it'll be damn near impossible for the ukrainians to get reinforcements if they can clear out all if the russians can make this their their area right here all this area russian held area it's going to be very difficult for ukraines to get in and then reinforce maripool they're, right now they're currently surrounded which is not it's clearly not good. So there was a fairly large battle towards the end of the day. And there was actually the, the Ukrainians took, they took a few losses there, which I'm going to show you guys the photos right now. They lost two T-80 uh, tanks, a BTR-80 and a T-64 BV, all Ukrainians, all from the 36th Marine Brigade right there on this map. And I'm going to annotate it on this one as well. I'm going to show you guys on Google Earth right now. So that battle took place just northeast of Maripool. You guys see it on the map there. So they are really going after Maripool right here. I'm going to go ahead and annotate it. This is where the, uh, the, the, the battles have been taking place is now X'd out and circled. So they do not control it, but they did take heavy losses there when it comes to, to tanks and which actually looks, looks to be some type of armored personnel carrier. Now we're going to scroll over here down to Bernadesk. You guys see this right here. They've, that's been held for the last 24 hours. There's been massive protests that's actually been against the Ru Russian occupation, which I'm going to go ahead and play a video of that right now. It shouldn't be super shocking that the Ukrainians are actually going to be protesting the Russians to leave. So I'm sure we're going to see that a ton. It's just kind of crazy. If you protest in Russia right now, you get locked up. You protest Russia in Ukraine, they just sit there and stare at you because they know they're in the wrong. Like they know that they're standing like, yeah, we're not going to do anything. We know we're in the wrong. Because the thing is, is Putin can't go around just killing all the civilians or the entire country is going to hate him more than they already do. Right now, there's a poll that went out. Nine out of ten Ukrainians are for standing ground and going against Russia. Nine out of 90%. That's a ton. Oh, if you guys also didn't know, forgot to tell about this. President Zelensky ordered a temporary lift for visa for foreigners wishing to join the International Legion and fight for Ukraine against Russia. So... If you guys want to go over there, you guys can fight with Ukraine. doesn't matter who you are. You want to go fight against Russia. So all my boys and all my guys and everybody who fought in Iraq and Afghanistan who's just been itching, which I saw a lot of comments about that. I'm sure there's quite a bit of us that are a little bit itchy to get over there. And you know what? I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Go fight for Ukraine against some bad guys. It's not a bad idea, but you can actually do that as of right now. Turkey has also blocked all Russian military ships from getting through passages of the Black Sea. Uh, it's a pretty big deal, so I'm going to go ahead and pull pull up where that's at on the map. So if you guys were to back out for this Black Sea, 
You guys see where Istanbul is right there? We're going to go ahead and just zoom in. So that passageway right there is the only route into the Black Sea. And if you guys can see that, they got to go from the Black Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, out to the North Atlantic Ocean. That's pretty much the route that they take to get out. And right now, Turkey has completely cut off Russian forces from coming in or out of the Black Sea. That's, that's a pretty big deal. Because if you guys think about it, Russia supplies Syria uh, through ships. So Syria now can't even get supplies because they've been supplying them since the very beginning. So now Syria can't even get their supplies because that is blocked off. That, that international waters, that, 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 that way through Istanbul has been completely blocked from Turkey to the Russians. I'm actually going to go over to the radar box here real quick and show you guys some flight paths. There's been some really interesting planes coming in and out. I don't know if they're still up in the air right now. But if you guys don't know this, you guys can actually see the planes while they're flying. I'm just going to go around and look real quick. So as you guys can see right here, there's there's actually a U.S. Air Force plane that has taken off from London and is currently flying over Romania right now. A lot of this stuff, I know it's kind of crazy. You can see military planes on here, but you can see a lot. Like I could scroll through. I could see all civilian air, airlines. If they turn off their transponders, well, you clearly aren't going to see them. But right now they're just doing, they're, there's tons of planes and holding patterns. There's another U.S. Air Force plane. It was actually, it took off from Poland. And it's making its way. It looks like it's making its way back over to the United States. But if you guys want to go on here and look, you guys can. There was some big bombers that actually came into England early, earlier this morning. And uh, I don't I don't know. Sometimes I just kind of have a good time and just get on and look on here. So as you can see, there's a Boeing C-17 Globemaster. I've flown in these things a ton. These things can fly. There's literally nothing on the inside of them, but... Who knows what it's carrying? It's probably carrying cargo. I don't I don't know where it's going. There's actually not a lot of stuff going on as there was earlier. Like all these planes I'm seeing around there. Oh, wow. I clicked on one and it just happens to be a Strato tanker. So there you go. There's one flying. Actually, it came from London and it's actually, fly, it's actually flying over Romania right now. I have no idea what it's doing. Earlier today, there was a ton of planes that were inside of a holding pattern from fighters to tons of just cargo planes. I will go over that some more uh, later, I guess, in other videos if you guys enjoy that. Right now, there's not really a lot going on, but I thought I'd show you if you know, if you want to take it out, you guys can. I mean, it's open it's open source stuff. So anyway, Russia's actually banned its citizens from transferring money abroad, so they can't even transfer money anymore. And Russian's foreign minister said that those who are supplying lethal weapons to Ukraine would bear responsibility if they are used during Moscow's ongoing invasion. So that was kind of a weird thing to say. I'm going to try to end all these these videos with something kind of strange, and that's kind of one. So apparently, if you give weapons to, to Ukrainians, it's your fault if they're used to fight off the invasion. Yeah, that's a little little strange thing to say, but I don't know. I guess, I guess our politicians here in America probably say dumber stuff than that. So, hey, I hope you guys did enjoy this video over here. I will see you guys later in the morning with another episode. Make sure to subscribe because we will have a ton of live streams going on. I do love you guys, and I'm out.